Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this another update video. I hope you guys are having a really terrific Tuesday thus far. Are. And so, of course, I'll be taking you guys through what is currently going on across the North Atlantic and also something interesting that both GFS and Euro are picking up on for next week. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update. All right. And so we're returning to this satellite imagery of the North Atlantic. And here we can see that there is some activity noted across some areas. We've got some dissipation frontal systems up north uh, looking over to parts of the US there we see some activity taking place lots of showers and thunderstorms in some areas same story uh, just along parts of southern Mexico going into Guatemala and uh, over in the eastern Pacific the itch is pretty active there as well and as we look to the tropics uh, in the Atlantic there we can definitely see all that convective activity taking place along the itch so let's zoom in and take a closer look at what's going on so uh, here we have it and we can see all this activity as I said and uh, as I mentioned if you watched yesterday's update video this is the breeding ground for the tropical waves uh, as we're going to be heading to summer and uh, overall the hurricane season. So uh, this is going to be the trend and as a matter of fact all of this activity along the itch is going to be increased in rainfall for northern South America. Uh, there is going to be that continuous rainfall activity and we're going to be looking at that rainfall uh, at those rainfall maps from the GFS and Euro later down in this video but now we want to take a look at the Caribbean looking at the region here we can see that there isn't much going on at all uh, there is that little flow of activity coming from the Pacific but that's not anything major to worry about the Lesser Antilles look to be pretty much in the clear we see uh, some of those clouds coming from the tropical Atlantic and that might bring maybe just some brief uh, overcast skies with some isolated showers in some areas but for the most part it's going to be a pretty hot and dry day as what uh, we've been experiencing across the region for some time now so uh, that is what's going on guys and uh, let's now move on to the rainfall potential maps and then we're going to be looking at what the GFS and Euro are showing uh, for the Caribbean and also other parts of the Western Atlantic as we're going to be heading into next week so here we have the GFS total precipitation map and and uh, this is between today and tomorrow, so for the next 24 hours. And uh, of course, as it becomes more colorful, that is depicting higher rainfall totals expected. So uh, look into uh, the region here. We can see that much isn't anticipated. Much rainfall isn't anticipated across uh, most of the Caribbean. See the highest totals in the region for Cuba and uh, maybe other sections of the Greater Antilles, such as parts of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, maybe an isolated shower or so for Jamaica. Looking down into South America though there we can see that it contrasts what's happening in the Caribbean we're seeing those shades of oranges reds indicating some of those higher rainfall totals expected uh, as you're going to be heading throughout the day however the northern part of those countries might not experience as much rainfall going on to the uh, euro model euro is showing something pretty much similar here so uh, not showing much rainfall activity for the Caribbean so uh, that is what the models are expecting not much rainfall throughout the Caribbean but of course course for northern South America that trend is going to be continuing with the itch inducing a lot of rainfall uh, activity and so now let's go ahead and move on to what the models are showing the operational models so looking at uh, GFS first so uh, those different colors are showing the average precipitation rate in millimeters per hour and of course those black lines are called isobars which join areas of equal pressure and when we see them in a circular manner uh, with a pressure below 1013 millibars uh, that is a low pressure system and they can sometimes be tropical cyclones so let's go ahead and see what the model is expecting here and uh, there we have the time uh, the forecast time up there so let's take a look at it and uh, we're seeing that as we're going to be heading into the middle of next week we see uh, activity across the northwestern Caribbean some increased rainfall for parts of the northwestern Caribbean and uh, not showing an organized system uh, more like like a blob of activity and especially with all that land interaction I don't think that we're going to be seeing development with
within this area. But the GFS is definitely showing uh, likely some rainfall activity, some increased rainfall, all that moisture, and eventually gets absorbed by a frontal system exiting the U.S. So uh, very interesting here what the model is showing. I wouldn't say that development is completely unlikely, uh, but I think that there would be a very, very low chance of that happening. And you also have to take into consideration the wind shear. So the wind shear usually helps to displace activity and prevent that concentration of showers and thunderstorms near the center of a low pressure system when we're talking about cyclogenesis. So uh, that is an inhibiting factor as well. And the wind shear is pretty much there right now. It is quite strong out there. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at what the euro has to show. So uh, euro is definitely showing that increased rainfall activity across parts of the northwestern Caribbean. Unfortunately for you guys in the east, uh, not seeing where a whole lot is expected for you. Uh, possibly with the exception of uh, areas such as Trinidad because of course there is going to be that itch and of course it might induce some activity within the area. So Euro showing that increased rainfall activity for parts of the northwestern Caribbean, Cuba, the Cayman Islands, uh, going over to the Bahamas and Florida and also getting absorbed. Only time will tell what the eventual outcome is going to be. And uh, I think there is still a chance that we could even see preseason activity. But of course, as the days, as the weeks pass, that chance is going to be decreasing if we're not seeing any signs pointing towards preseason development. But we still got a long way to go. I mean, it's just the 9th of May now. We've got some time here and I think that we could still definitely see preseason development, but that is not guaranteed. However, in terms of what is happening across the tropics, I will keep you guys updated. So that is pretty much it for right now. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there. And as always, remember to be weatherwise.